Hi, boys and girls. Mrs. Hansen here. So, we are going to read our first story that goes along with our new chapter for this week. Our story for this week is called Red Eyes or Blue Feathers, a book about animal colors. And it's by Patricia M. Stockland. She's our author, so that's who writes our words. And it's illustrated by Tab Aron, which um, he's the person who draws the pictures. So I'm going to go over a little bit about a uh, little bit of vocabulary that we'll hear while we're um, while Mrs. Hansen's reading the story. So I want you to know what these words mean um, before we read them, and so you guys are able to follow along and understand what's going on while we're reading as well. So our first word that you're going to hear is communicate. So communicate is a way to share information, news, or ideas. So a sentence with communicate. Color is one way chameleons communicate. So like we communicate by talking or writing or texting. Um, another word we'll hear is mood. How you feel. So that's like how you feel. So if you could be in a bad mood, a good mood, here's a sentence. A chameleon's shade changes depending on its mood and temperature. Our next word Scent. So scent like a smell, which a red fox follows a scent. Fly, which means sneaky. Neither predators nor prey can see the sly fox. So sneaky, or sly means sneaky. Survive, continue to remain. So that means that with the sentence, um, being able to hide so well helps keep this animal live and survive in many different places. So it helps, keeps alive. And then the last one, temperature, how cold or hot it is. A chameleon shade changes depending on its mood or temperature. So those are some words that you guys will be hearing while Mrs. Hansen is reading. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what the story is about. So it says it's a book about animal colors. So we're going to learn about how animals use their environment or their surroundings where they live to adapt to their environment or how they, how they survive using those things. And this is an informational text. Remember, we've been talking about that. So we're going to hear lots of facts. And this is nonfiction because we're going to be learning true things about these animals. Okay? So that's called an informational text. And so we're looking at our story cover and we have it looks like a frog and it says their title is red eyes or blue feathers and it says we're going to learn about animal colors what type of animal do you think we're going to learn about and what do you think we're going to learn about those animals i bet there's probably going to be a frog in there just because there's a frog on our cover and it says or blue feathers so i'm thinking maybe we're going to learn about a bird too we'll see Let's see, what do you guys think? I don't know. Let's find out. Every time. Ooh, look at, there's a parrot. Okay, so up here it says color adaptation. What's the best way to survive in the wild? Adaptation. Color is one way to adapt. So, how does an animal's colors help it survive? Some animals have colors that help them hide from hungry predators. Other animals use their color to keep from being seen while they hunt. Colors even help animals find mates or talk to each other. Read on to find out why some animals have such clever colors. The red-eyed tree frog. Bright red eyes shine in the night. The red-eyed tree frog is wide awake. During the day, this tiny frog hides in its, its bright colors by closing its eyes and tucking up its legs. The red-eyed tree frog's shiny green back blends in with the trees. Predators think the little frog is a leaf. So, the, um, the frog is hiding its bright colors so the predators can't see him because what do the predators want to do? Predators want to eat the frog. And do, if you are a little tree frog, do you want to get eaten? 
no. So then down here, it says the vertical, vertical pupil. So see how his pupil of his eye, the black of his eye goes up and down vertical. Of uh, the red-eyed tree frog help it see better at night. Daytime frogs usually have horizontal pupils. Look at that. We learned horizontal and vertical all in math. Polar bear. White fur surrounds a shiny black nose. A polar bear slowly lumbers across the snow. Lumbers means like walking. A polar bear's snow coated or colored coat blends in with the Arctic tundra. Its favorite tree is sea blubber or seal blubber. Mrs. Hansen cannot talk today, I guess. Seal blubber. So they like to eat the fat off of seals. Not happy. As the bear sits on the edge of the ice, a seal comes up for air. The seal doesn't see the giant paw grabbing for it. Grr. Polar bears are not actually white. Their fur is transparent or clear. Light reflects off of it and makes it appear white or yellowish. I didn't know that. Red fox. Rusty colored fur rustles through the woods. A red fox follows the scent. Remember a scent, smell. This small fox finds food in many places. Its red coat and dark tail help it blend in with plants and trees. Neither predators or prey can see the sly fox. Being able to hide so well helps this animal live and survive in many different places. So he's able to hunt and get food, and so he's the predator, and then people who are trying, or other animals that are trying to hunt him, he's able to keep away from them because he's really sly and sneaky. A red fox will eat almost anything, including insects, fruit, and leftover food from people's garbage cans. Seahorse. Yellow, green, and brown seaweed swishes in the shallow sea. A small seahorse swishes in the seaweed too. The seahorse is a slow swimmer. Its yellow-brown armor helps it blend in with the seaweed. Larger fish can't see the seahorse hiding. The seahorse can quickly change color to blend in better with its surroundings. It also changes colors when it mates. So, they are changing colors so they can blend in with the seaweed so then the animals, the other animals can't eat them. So a lot of them so far are changing their colors so that they're able to either eat other animals or not be eaten by other animals, right? Killer whale. A huge black and white animal glides through the water. The killer whale is ready to attack. This ocean mammal, mammal is a smart hunter. Black and white markings help this large animal hide. From below, its white belly looks like sunlight. From above, its black back becomes part of the ocean's shadows. Killer whales use a lot of hunting tricks. Some swim, swim under chunks of ice and tip them. Resting seals slide off into the water. Oh, those darn seals, and they're so adorable. Macaw. Oh, it's a macaw, not a parrot. I think a macaw is a type of parrot. I don't know. Red, blue, yellow, and green feathers float in the air. A colorful macaw lands in the trees. Macaws are some of the brightest birds around. The fancy colors fit well in their rainforest homes. These bold colors help the parrots blend in with their surroundings. The white skin around the macaw's beak will turn red if the bird is excited or angry. Good to know. So if you see a macaw, don't touch it if it's red around, so it might be mad. Black rhinoceroses. A big booming tank stomped down, stomped down the hill. The black rhino is on its way to the watering hole. This giant creature isn't really black. It's actually gray. Rhinos like to cool off by getting dirty, but the mud also makes them look darker. A nice mud bath makes the hot African sub, sun easier to handle. 
The dried mud on the rhino skin also protects animals from pesky flies. So he rolls around in mud and he makes it look darker, but it's really helping him cool down from the sun because it's hot. Jewel beetle. A shiny blue and gold shell shimmers in the sun. A jewel beetle sparkles on a flower. This bright beetle looks pretty enough to wear, but don't be fooled. It uses the dazzling color as a disguise. Predators think this tasty creature is part of the plant, so it's blending in so it doesn't get eaten. Jewel beetles also use their bright colors to find mates. Chameleon. Green skin turns yellow and then turns to red instead. The changing chameleon rests on a rock. A chameleon shade changes depending on its mood and temperature. It also uses this clever color to code, code, this clever color code to show how it feels. Color is one way chameleons communicate. Many people think chameleons can change color, but they can't. Their colors do include, oh, they, they can, Mrs. Hansen cannot read today or talk. I should just stop, but I have to read to you guys, so just bear with me. <laughs> Many people think chameleons can change any color, but they cannot. Their colors do include black, white, blue, green, red, and yellow. So they can't um, change to any color, but they do have some colors that they can change to. Okay, so it says, do you remember? Point to the picture of the animal described in the question. The dried mud on the skin makes me look black. This baked on color helps me cool. Who am I? Rhino. My black and white colors help me to hunt the ocean. With this disguise, my prey can't see me. Who am I? You're right, the killer whale. My bright green back looks like a leaf. This color hides me during the day while I sleep. Who am I? The tree frog. So all these things we learned about, all the colors and the way they change are called adaptations. Can you say it with me? Adaptations. So adaptations are ways that the animals change in order to survive or hunt or prevent from being hunted. So let's see some fun facts. If a predator startles a red-eyed tree frog during the day, the frog's bright eyes pop open. The sudden red usually scares the predator, giving the little tree frog time to escape. The skin underneath a polar bear's fur is black. The dark color helps trap heat from the sun to keep the big animal warm in the cold Arctic. Most rhinos, including the black rhinoceros and white rhinoceros, are just different shades of gray. Jewel beetles are so shiny and colorful that some people collect them. The bright bugs have been used in jewelry, art, and clothing. Chameleons do not change color to match their surroundings. The color changes according to their mood, temperature, and willingness to mate. So then we, these are some of our, this is our glossary. So glossary is like shows us words. Remember Mrs. Hansen went over the vocabulary. Here's some other vocabulary. Communicate, disguise, horizontal, mammals, predator, prey, and vertical. So those are all words that we talked about. And we know what these words mean because we've talked about them before. So let's see if the end. That's the end of our story. So I hope you guys like that. I love talking about adaptations and about different animals, and that will also help us for when we write our animal report for next week. So I hope you guys were listening and thinking and getting ideas, and I'm excited to talk more about this soon. Have a good day, guys. Bye.